All right, you guys, this is Ross. I thought I would show you guys my persimmons, give you guys a persimmon update. We're gonna look at uh, about 10 or so of my persimmon trees here that I'm growing in the Philadelphia area. Um, all of them, or most of them, are different varieties. We have this one up front on the main street. It's called Miss Kim. And uh, this is a astringent, persimmon that I find to be quite tasty. It's an Asian type and it really does a nice job at setting fruits. Even at a young age, um, I really value that. However, the fruit, the, the load of the crop is actually so heavy that it's starting to drop some fruits. And that was really to be expected because you can't just hold on to this many fruits of this young of a tree. Um, it would just be a little bit unexpected in my mind. So, it's, uh, it is now dropping, I would say, probably half of its crop. Um, in total, maybe it had about 30 fruits. So I'm, hope I'm hopeful that I'll get about 15 fruits this year. This guy here, I grafted myself a few years ago. What's this one called? Tam Cam. So it's very similar to Miss Kim. They're hardier Asian persimmons. But the Tam Cam, instead of being an astringent type, it's non-astringent, quite similar to a Jiro or a Fuyu, and unfortunately both of the persimmons that were on this tree this year have dropped. Um, so they set well, and the same thing with this Jiro that I have, this itchy Jiro, the fruits have uh, fallen off, but they never really even got to the point where the Miss Kim or the Tam Cam had gotten to. So at least, uh, you know, this tree here had kind of done its thing at least as long as it could before it actually dropped those fruits. So a bit unfortunate, but yeah, it's just part of the process of growing persimmons, guys. You know, um, I've been dealing with this, this issue and you will deal with this issue pretty much since you start. So it's unfortunate, but it's kind of like persimmons are synonymous with fruit drop. And if I could figure out a way to <laughs> have them stop dropping completely, I would I would love it. Uh, certainly a male would help, but I have to, uh, I really should plant myself a male, to be honest with you. Definitely on my next property, I will definitely be doing that. This right here in my nice food forest area that I'm growing in, we have things like plums espiate against the fence, the pawpaw, we have comfrey all over the ground. There's a quince down there. I actually grafted myself a sejo very young, onto uh, Virginiana. Planted it here, it's really quite a shaded area. And I'm just thankful that it's, it's growing, it's doing well, it's getting enough light to actually get some of that photosynthesis it needs. This is my celebrity. Um, I got this years ago from Cliff at England's Nursery. Uh, it's an American persimmon, I believe. At least I, as far as I know. Um, could be a cross. I think my friend Dennis was saying that it's a cross, but I think this is an American, if I'm not mistaken. You can see a fruit there. I've had this tree in the ground for a number of years. In fact, I've had it in the ground the same time I've had this one in the ground. This is a proc, and it's huge. It's really taken up about double the size because this celebrity for a couple years really acted funny since I received it from Cliff. Um, Personally, I find that most of the bare-rooted persimmons just don't do that well. Uh, this one obviously has, this proc, and it even fruited at a younger age. And now again this year, it's going to fruit hopefully very soon because proc is such an early persimmon. Um, it fruits well before my frost, I think sometime in August or early September, which is fantastic. It's really, really, really special here in the Philadelphia area. I would highly recommend that you guys try to find an early persimmon like Proc. There isn't a ton of fruits on it. It definitely has dropped a number of them and um, I have to come in here and prune this and in the wintertime really try to shape this so that we're getting better light into the center. These long shoots up above, I probably will cut them out um, because we do have some lower scaffolding and I'm gonna try to maintain this open center that you can see in here, rather than keeping these, these main shoots. 
Um, so we'll see, this is a little shadier of an area. I can't expect, I think, the best fruit set from these trees, but they're doing well considering the circumstances. And if I take you guys over here, we have more persimmons. I have them all over the yard in different areas. I've really tried to experiment with them. I, to be honest with you, I probably should have grown some in containers and kept them in containers, I should say, and really learned a bit more about them. Because it's amazing what you can learn growing them in the ground versus growing them in pots. I think it really makes a big difference. This here is a Virginiana seedling. I have a number of seedlings that I had in pots and I just said, I can't deal with this anymore. Let me just plant them. So I put some in the ground. I tried grafting onto this. It was quite healthy, vigorous. And uh, I think my scion just was dead. So I have a few scions that didn't make it. Uh, oh, by the way, I grafted in Akita's gift that back where we were in the beginning of the video over there by those blueberry plants, um, I planted a very small Nikita's gift that I grafted really only about a month ago. Um, so I've learned, I think it's better to do your grafting a bit later in the season rather than shortly after bud break. Let them grow a bit and then graft. Uh, this is another sejo I have here. So this is my original sejo tree. Um, and then I grafted wood from this. I've used wood from this and grafted to other trees. Because this is just, in my opinion, it's a very, very tasty persimmon. I, I don't know who would disagree, to be honest with you. Um, I've been very curious about the persimmon psyllid. And it seems like this, a lot of the trees have the psyllid. And I, I just theorize that that is the reason why some of these have been dropping fruits. Um, all the trees across the board in my yard had looked very healthy this year. I didn't see really any disease or any uh, persimmon psyllid, I'm sorry. But where there's a rosianca over here that's about six or seven years old, we're gonna look at, and that's the tree that actually struggles with it. So we'll see if, you know, that psyllid becomes a problem. I think what my, what I'm gonna try this year is dormant spraying them to get rid of that psyllid. Um, and hopefully that's gonna kill a lot of that and maybe it's enough to I don't know, we'll see if we could see a difference in the, uh, the dropping of the fruits. This one here I think is called Guang Yang, if I'm not mistaken. Just double check. Yes, this is Guang Yang. So another hardy Asian persimmon, along with Seijo is another hardy Asian persimmon. We're in, you know, we're in zone 7A and I, I really don't think, to be honest with you, I haven't seen really any damage on my persimmons. So I know I've planted hardier varieties, but I probably could have gotten away with planting some less hardy Asian persimmons and stuck them in the ground and just, you know, see what really would happen. So this is my really large Rosianca. This is the Asian American hybrid. And uh, actually right next to it, I planted this young tree I got from uh, Edible Landscaping. You can see this new growth is really showing some problems, you know, whereas this, the growth that it put out in the season, early in the season is very healthy. So I don't know what that is. I think it's the psyllid. But this tree, oh man, what's the name of this one? Okay, this is the Gil Ya. And this, according to Michael McConkie at Edible Landscaping, is the earliest Asian persimmon that he has, I think is what he said. So this one will ripen around the same time as Proc. And a Proc's an American, so I should be able to enjoy really tasty, good quality persimmons early in the season before the frost kind of artificially ripens them. But I want the, you know, the opposite to be true as well. I want to be able to harvest in the winter, maybe even in, in March at some point of the following year because there are persimmons that the, the, the persimmons will hang on the trees for an extended period of time. And um, you'll actually be able to harvest them the following year. So this tree, I've been trying to keep it under control in terms of this growth. I really made a lot of cuts to cut out all this upper stuff to really open the center of the tree. I'm afraid now at this point to cut it. What I was doing is see all these water shoots I was rubbing them off early in the season. Then it, then it kind of got away from me. And instead of rubbing them off, I just, they just eventually kept growing and 
that's why the tree looks so darn big at this point. But it's more wide than it is big. And I have to cut all these out, I guess, next season. Um, this tree, of course, every single year, it, dro it just drops fruits. You know, that's really, it's been the bane of my existence. But this year it's finally held on to some of these fruits. You can see down there. And you can even see on this, this growth here that it started out in the beginning of the season. It just seems to be infected by that persimmon psyllid. And I think that just that persimmon psyllid's messing with the photosynthesis early in the season and ruining the, the flowering process in some way. That's, that's at least my theory. Anyway, I don't, this tree doesn't have a ton of fruit on it. It should have way, 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 way more fruits than it does. But at least I have something here. And you can see even on this, this branch over here, oddly enough, is filled with fruits. And this is the shadier side of the tree. So it's really strange because um, I had a feeling, well, let's open up the center because it's just not getting enough light. That was another theory I had on the fruit drop. You can see there's also some really in here that are just, you know, very shaded. So I don't know, maybe I, I'm going to keep this form that I currently have is that open center and train them all to that. Here's more of them, but I don't know. It just kind of goes to show that maybe it isn't the form or it isn't the lack of light over here. This tree only really gets about seven hours of light, but you know, um, like I said, maybe it isn't the light. Maybe it's something else that's happening. Maybe it is just the age. You know, this is its sixth year-ish. And really around age five to seven, they start to really start to produce. So it really could just be a matter of time. Could be a number of things. I don't know, but it would be nice to have so many fruits on this tree that it kind of just stops the growth in its tracks. So I don't have to put up with all these big water shoots that kind of shade the rest of the tree. I think what it'll also do is because the skirt of the tree is so low that I have to really take out some of these lower scaffolds and keep some of this midsection stuff in here. So this is gonna be a weird pruning job on this tree and it's gonna be seem, it's gonna seem very hard. And I don't know if it's really a great idea to be pruning as hard as I'm going to be. I don't know if it's a good idea to prune during the growing season either. You know, that summer pruning. I imagine it can't be the worst idea, but to prune out a lot of wood, and it's not typically what you would see as summer pruning where you come in here and you prune a lot of these shoots to keep them uh, back in height and all that. You know, it's just a different, to me it just has a different feel to it instead of summer pruning, it seems like I'm really taking out big cuts, or at least I would be taking out big cuts. And I don't want to do that while the fruit's still on the tree. You know, so maybe in the fall I'll do it after these trees, you know, really start to, or the fruits really start to ripen. Rosianca isn't too late either, it seems like. So who knows? That was the little tour here on the persimmons. I'm happy to update you guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you for the next one. Take care.